This is a tutorial video about how to use Autodesk Inventor and VEX components and then constrain chain or pink tread onto the gears, onto the sprockets within Autodesk Inventor. Here are some examples uh, that I've made up. This method of constraining the chain links along the path is adapted from a post and video I found by Nishith and Navish. This is their blog up here. Uh, check them out for some more information and some more tutorials. I haven't gone through a lot of their stuff. Uh, it's not about Vex, but it's about Inventor, and it looks like it's got some good information. <clears throat> so to start with, I have an assembly made that has a base plate and has three high-strength sprockets on top of bearings. I assemble these using iMates. If you're not familiar with using iMates and in VEX uh, assemblies and Inventor, uh, check out the links to other videos below. They're very useful. They reduce a lot of headache, especially when you're um, aligning up the square holes with round parts that VEX has. Uh, makes it very efficient to be able to do so. Uh, what I need to do in order to put the chain on these sprockets is draw a path of the the line that the sprocket that the chain is going to follow around the sprockets. So I'm going to start with making the origin plane visible that uh, bisects the center of one of these sprockets. Doesn't matter which one. And then I'm going to create a new part. I'll call it path of chain around sprockets, call it whatever you want, and I'm going to constrain that part directly to this plane that I've placed here. Now it brings me into a part modeling view, and I'm going to create a new sketch on the plane that is on the same one that I just selected before. What I need for my path is parts of projected geometry from each of these sprockets. I need the center point of each sprocket, and I can actually get that from any round feature that's a part of the sprocket. I also need the center point of the arc that makes up one of the insides of one of the teeth. just need one of them for each sprocket. So I need the center point. It could be any circular feature on the sprocket that gives me that as well as one center point of an arc. Once I have those pieces of reference geometry, I'm going to draw circles using them centered in the center of the sprockets and then tan and then tangent to that center point of the arc on the outside. Once I have those circles drawn, I'm going to connect lines that will represent the path of my chain. When I draw the lines, I want to be careful not to accidentally constrain them to geometry that I don't want it to be constrained to. So I'm going to start by just selecting not really the right location yet, and I'll come back with the tangent tool in a second to make sure all of the lines are constrained where they are. If I accidentally were to snap them to say the top of the circle or some other reference geometry, that wouldn't give me an exactly tangent line. It wouldn't look right when I was done. I've got all of the lines tangent to the circles. Last thing is to trim away the parts of the circles that are not part of the chain path. So I adjust the chain path. And finish that sketch. I next want to place a point to represent where the first chain link is going to go. And I want it to be at the intersection on along the path from where it gets tangent to a straight line. Then I'm going to pattern that, path, that point around the path of the rectangular pattern. So I'm going to choose that point feature, and then choose the path as my direction. 
it's important that the arrow for the direction falls along the path. If it goes the opposite direction, you should choose the point on the opposite end of the path. Otherwise, it's not going to follow the path properly. I want them to go all the way around, so I'll choose curve length, and it'll go all the way around. It tells me what that curve length is there. I'm going to use that value to calculate how many I need. So it's 37.331 for this one, divided by the length between each chain length, and I know that to be 0.386. Once I do that, you can see that all of the points fall in line, and that's going to be exactly the number of points that I need for my chain. One more thing, I need to change the direction. Um, I, I need to change the advanced options to compute, to adjust, and the orientation to be following direction one. Nothing visibly changes here, but it's important for the final production of the chain that that be done. Uh, one last thing here before I exit this part, I want to turn that sketch visibility back on so that I can use that for a constraint coming up. Now I'll return to my assembly. Notice that since I used reference geometry from the sprockets, that this part is automatically adaptive. Now that's important to notice that uh, because we want it to follow along that. What happens when that part is adaptive is it has locked these otherwise um, movable pieces. If I want to move these sprockets again, I have to turn off adaptivity and then I can move my sprockets. However, notice that uh, I can also move this chain path. So I don't want to accidentally do that. Uh, so if you do turn off the additivity, make sure you turn it back on so that that chain path stays locked in place. Now I can place one link of my chain. I use the high strength chain for this because these are the high strength sprockets. And this chain link has been uh, created so that it has specific work geometry to use. I want to be able to use the plane, the work plane, the origin plane that bisects it down the center. So I'll turn the visibility on for that. And I have two other work features here. I have, a, I have a point that is in the center of the part. You can see it right there. And I have a path that bisects the other direction. So I'll turn that on as well. Now I need to constrain my first link to the path. So I'll use a mate constraint to constrain the center of it. I'll use this origin plane I had on before. It brings it over here, but that's OK. I'll just slide it back over here for now. That lines it up in the center. Then I want to constrain the other plane with my path that I've created. And that'll line it up along the path. Sometimes it jumps away, so you got to bring it back in. Finally, I want to put it at the right starting position. I want it to start where I put that first work point. So you can see that work point right here. It's hidden, though, inside the gear. So I'm going to turn off adaptivity. I'm going to rotate my gear a little bit, turn back on adaptivity so I can see that work point again. I'll move this one close to it and constrain those two work points together, that one with that one. Now I have my chain in the right starting position. Before I pattern the chain, I'm going to turn off some of these work features so that that plane and that point as well as that origin point. Now, to make the chain, I go to pattern up at the top under component. This is a component pattern. The component I want to pattern is the chain link. And the feature I want to use is this rectangular pattern. To get access to it, I need to go to modeling view and then just click on rectangular pattern under my path of chain around sprocket. And that puts all of the links of the chain in place around the path. Since I used that calculation for how many I needed, you can see that they all line up nicely as if they're snapped together. Just to increase the uh, accuracy of the visual visualization here, 
I'm going to turn off a couple of features. I'll turn off the sketch. And to get those points out of there, I need to expand this, uh, expand this rectangular pattern, expand all the children, click on the first one, click on the last one, with holding on shift, turn off the visibility. Now I can collapse those back up. And then I can turn off that activity one more time so that I can position these sprockets to be right where they're supposed to be in relation to the links on the chain. I can turn off the origin plane for that one that I turned on. And when I'm all done adjusting them, I turn back on the visibility, or turn back on the adaptivity of my path so that everything stays locked in place. So there you have it, uh, constraining, or placing a constrained chain about sprockets uh, in VEX parts for an Autodesk Inventor.